a rift was inevitable. When the Chinese went after Tibet's religion, they went after its soul. Every Tibetan knows he's simply a link in a chain of reincarnations stretching from the past into the future. The endless chanting of sutras, the constant spinning of mani wheels, prayer wheels, everyday objects, the koras, the ritual circumambulation of holy places 100 times, the prostration pilgrimages made over hundreds of miles, the Chinese occupiers saw these as absurd rites and superstitions that had to be eradicated. That was Mao's mistake. His move to eradicate the religion of Tibet plunged the country into turmoil, and the Dalai Lama remembered he was more Buddhist than Marxist. These provinces, large number of monastic institutions. So then, 56, till Cultural Revolution, more than 6,000 monasteries destroyed. And I think at least one to 200,000 monks, I think, killed or put in labor camp. And some of them escaped into India. They say a pricing happened in this area because of reform. Reform, uh, the word, very nice. The world is changing, the world becoming more civilized. Reform is very necessary. <laughs> but then the communist style reform <laughs> is not simply sort of fit in the Tibetan area. On March 10th, 1959, when the rebels from Kham had fallen back to Lhasa and anti-Chinese proclamations covered the city's walls, the taboo cry of independence was shouted in the streets. Alarmed by rumors that the Chinese army planned to abduct the Dalai Lama, the crowd formed a human cordon around Nobulinka Palace. The army fired several warning shots. On the evening of the 17th, fearing the events would end in a bloodbath, the Dalai Lama decided to leave Lhasa. He fled to India. The rift between Tibet and China was complete. <laughs> After two days of fighting, Mao bowed to the evidence. His military victory in the field had proved to be a political failure. The flight of the Dalai Lama ruined his plans, and in front of the Politburo, he declared, we have lost the battle for Tibet. Even worse, the plight of Tibet captured the sympathy of the world, and the question of Tibet's right to self-determination was raised at the UN. It became imperative for Mao to save face. The official Chinese version maintained that the Dalai Lama had been kidnapped and spirited away by rebels against his will and Beijing appealed to the Russian propaganda machine to attempt to convince the world that the Tibetan people were delighted about the turn of events. Tibet 
Ламы снова вышли на улицу. Они продают верующим религиозные писания. Прощаются в школы. На время отсутствия Далай-Ламы, увезенного за границу, Государственный совет Китайской Народной Республики возложил на Панчин Эртни обязанности председателя подготовительного комитета по созданию Тибетского автономного района. Заместитель председателя комитета генерал Жан Гохуа. На первом задании комитета председательствует Панчин Эртни. Сурово осудив мятежников, ораторы говорили о том, что созыв настоящего заседания открывает новую историческую страницу в создании демократического социалистического Тибета. China believed it had found a figurehead to replace the Dalai Lama and heaped praise on the Panchen. That ended three years later when he wrote an open letter to Chairman Mao exposing the abuses of the Chinese authorities. Imprisoned in China, subjected to humiliation, the Panchen Lama did not reappear until 20 years later when the Cultural Revolution ended. They were years of suffering for the Tibetans, as his plan for Tibet had collapsed, Mao resorted to a ruthless policy of complete eradication. Thank you.